Yeah, bit of a crazy night last night, actually. Um, some of the people from the show dragged me out to a club and had an absolute carnage. Had about four pints, then a casino, fell in with a stag do, and nice lads, but I lost a bet, so here we are. I think I can hear my pager. It's all right, you know. What do you mean? I'm a werewolf, too. I suppose it's understandable. If you've never met any other werewolves, how would you know how to spot them? Us. I can't stop thinking about your talk. All the things that you've done and bought. I was just wondering if you had any, like, you know, like, pointers for me. I'm a werewolf too, but I've never lived anywhere posh like you. I live in a house now, but... I ain't got it all to myself. I have to share it with a couple of friends. I used to live in a van in the woods with my dad. I'd move about and keep a low profile and... I'll just live off the land, really. What did you say? I used to live in a van in the woods with my dad. Before that? Um, I'm a werewolf, but I've never lived anywhere posh like you. After that, you said something about living in a house with people. Yeah. Do they know what you are? Yeah, totally. And they don't mind? No, well, they've got their own things going on. So, you want to know about the secret of my success? Yeah. Half of me thinks it's impossible. Half of me thinks it would be selfish not to pass on my wisdom. And yet... The other half just wants to throw caution to the wind. That's three halves. Oh, you're good. <laughs> Real good. So, this house of yours, how big is it exactly? We need to talk about Mary. I did say you'd find her a little dull. Dull's not the word that I would use. Um... Crazy, sort of batshit shocking is more the flavour. I'm sorry, is this some new youth slang for boring? I do try to keep up. Mary is not who you think she is, Hal. The whole posh totty thing, it's just an act. Why on earth would she do that? I don't know and I don't care, but what I'm worried about is the fact that she's been stuck here for 200 years and it's turned her into a total frothing loon. Is that what's going to happen to me? Look, even if you don't pass over for a while... I'm sure you'd cope with it admirably. You and Mary are completely different people, after all. Had a thing with you. Got killed. Stuck here as a ghost, but mates now. Does that ring any bells? You are right, Tom? I'm fine, are you? Oh, is that somebody at the door? Tom! My young apprentice. Larry, come on in, mate. Alex Hal, this is Larry, the werewolf of the talk. Greetings. Larry Chrysler. Hi. Very nice. The room. Love the place. Buffet monitor. Good to see you again. Larry's going to teach me how to become a successful werewolf. How do you feel about that, Hal? Good for you, Tom. Yeah, it is good for me, Tom. So I'm to take it you're both... Werewolves as well? No. I'm a vampire. And I'm a ghost. Very good. See what you're doing there? Using humour to break the ice? Great stuff. So I see you've brought a suitcase. Yeah, well, my tutoring can be quite time-intensive. We thought rather than a lot of coming and going, I'd just stay here for a while. Uh. Yeah. Larry's going to stay here for a while to train me. Right. The more the merrier. You're not the boss of me here, Al. I can do what I like. Yes, I know. I said it was great. So. Oh. Great to meet you both. I didn't know you wanted to stay. I thought we discussed it, hadn't we? Sure we did. We were thinking it anyway. Huh? Because of the training? Yeah. Yeah, the training. Lots of it. Great stuff. Well, when do we start? Like, is there a manual or something? Yes. Of course there is, a vital component of the programme. Now, uh, <clears throat> this is the most important book you'll ever own. Uh, truly got me where I am today. This book is now your Bible. I want you to live it, breathe it, sleep with it, under your pillow. I'm just saying it's a good book. Oh, wow. Thanks, Larry. You say your dad taught you a few things? Yeah. Um, only steal from big shops. There's good eating on rabbit and underpants inside out by you next week. Essential life lessons. 
Anything about becoming a success, making something of yourself? Uh, not really. It was more about whittling him, not starving to death. You were amazing, though, my dad. We were hardly ever out of each other's sight. You protected me from the world. A bit too much, maybe. I don't know, I just want to make him proud. And I get dead frustrated when I can't, and I get things wrong and that. Tom, open that door. Did you see him go? Old Tom, failure Tom, he's left the building. All right, see ya. No, 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 Tom, shun him. Shun him. Shun him. Now, let's get down to basics. Clothes maketh the man. How would you like this suit, Tom? To keep. You just give me a suit. It's important, vitally important, to make a good first impression. And this little baby has done wonders for me. Oh, cheers, Larry. Give me all this stuff and feel as I should give you something in return. <laughs> no, not necessary, seriously. <laughs> Having said that, there is one thing you could help me with. Yeah, anything. Well, obviously, I need to buy a new suit now. Um, and I've got a bit of a cash flow issue over the next few days, so I'm transferring money between banks, you know how it is. But if you could maybe lend me, say, £150... I've got some savings. Actually, forget it. I'm, I'm embarrassed for even asking. <laughs> I'll think of something, don't worry. <laughs> don't know what exactly, but something will turn up. I'll help you out, Larry. But it's just a loan, though, yeah, for a few days? Absolutely. Absolutely. <laughs> Hello, Hal. I've just come to congratulate you on your new position of manager. Thank you, Tom. That Larry suit. You're not the only one who can wear a suit, Hallie. I've got this printed off at the library. Tom McNair Incorporated? Yep. I think you're supposed to put something else on there, like a phone number or an email. I'll call you. Yeah, there's a new player in town, and he's got the skills, and the looks, and the motivation, and the skills. He's got the whole package. Quite. I'm going to carry your breakfast down, man. Everything okay? Yeah, they were really impressed. I did the power run shake, I gave him a card, um, interrupted him. I mean, that's three of the ingredients for success pie right there, isn't it? Success pie? Yeah, the book, chapter four, success pie. Oh, the book, of course. Now, your next life lesson. Take this, go and put the windscreen through in that BMW over there. Whose car is it? Let's say it's your competitor who has stolen your assets and voted you off the board. Yeah, but whose car is it really? Mine. Stolen by my bitch of an ex-wife who is currently spending my money tanning herself in that spa so she can look even more like the leather handbag which I bought. Ha! The irony makes me want to puke. Your ex-wife this thing in 92 and 94. One in the same. Although 1992 was a long time ago as one look at her will plainly tell you. I don't think I can do this. I thought you wanted to learn how to climb the mountain of success. Yeah, but I don't think smash the windscreen is going to help me climb the mountain of success or eat success pie, is it? Tom, sometimes you have to do regrettable things to get to the top. When you do, your old dad will be looking down and smiling. If I do this, he won't. Maybe you're right. I mean, I'm pushing you too quickly. Just go and let our tyres down and we'll say no more about it. Go on. All of them. It's simple, really. I go off and have adventures and just make sure I'm back here in time for all the pretty Lord Harry bullshit. Why? That's what I don't understand. And what about your unfinished business? Oh, that's all sorted. Something about library books? No, I've had loads of doors appear. I just turn them down. What? Why? How? He needs me. I know he's got you, and there's been Pearl and Annie, and those are just the ones I can remember, but... Me and Hal have something special. Something no one else could ever understand. Which is? I keep them clean. 
Seeing me once a year stops him from killing and has kept him from killing for more than two centuries. What do you mean? Well, I was his last victim. Is that what he told you? Yes. You know what? It's not my business. But I... Mm, just really don't think that all these lies are that healthy. Just tell him who you really are. What if he doesn't want the new me? Mm. Sometimes when he looks at me, it's like... It's just on the tip of his tongue. Yeah, you two really need to have a talk. No, 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 no. I'm not ready. OK, listen, um, you've shown me your world. How about I show you mine? And come see my gaff. OK. Cheers. Sorry. Might have a quick word. Shoot. I was just wondering how Tom's lessons were progressing. Yeah, very... We're at a delicate stage. We're breaking down barriers. To replace them with? Bridges, castles, affordable housing. <laughs> Actually, there's something I've been meaning to ask you. Did you ever meet Tom's father? No. I never had that pleasure. But I'm right in thinking they kept him away from people and that Tom was homeschooled? That was my understanding, although I don't think McNair's lessons were exactly conventional. You must take some of the credit, of course, for helping Tom adjust to society. Tom's been very resourceful in that area. Sir, are you saying you haven't taught him anything? I mean, you're obviously a man of breeding and intelligence, whereas Tom was almost literally raised by wolves. That's something of a sweeping statement. And yet you felt no compulsion to pass on any of your... Yeah, fine. Not really my place. Unbelievable. I suppose the greatest test of a teacher's work is whether the student thrives without them. It'll be interesting to see Tom implement all the things you've taught him. Once you've gone. Once all of this is over. It's a big house. But not that big. How odd you must find our little setup here. How domesticated. Perhaps we are a little rigid, but that structure seems to work for us. And we'll do all we can to protect it. I'll bear that in mind. My situation is not unique. I appreciate that. People lose their jobs every day. When that happens, no doubt, other aspects of their life expand to fill the void. The problem with my life is there's nothing else there to expand. I don't have a family. I don't have any hobbies. The job was my life. And now that's gone. So I find myself at something of a loose end. What was it that you did? Your job? Oh, civil service. Very dull. Well, that was what I always said. But it's something of a lie. My job was covert and dangerous. It required me to commit acts that will haunt me until the day I die. All in the name of holding back the tide. And if we simply step aside now and allow that tide to wash over the world, then all my sacrifice has been for nothing. All those deaths have been for nothing. Do you understand? Would you like me to tell you what I'm wearing? <laughs>